Having a chicken dust bath is something that I consider a must have feature of every chicken coop yard. Without one, your chickens can still be perfectly healthy, but it serves an important purpose, which is to help keep mites, lice, fleas, and other pests away. So I'm sure that we can all agree that having a chicken dust bath is a great idea. But when you're trying to learn about how to set it up and which ingredients to use or not to use, the internet is flooded with questions and debates. So in today's video, I want to cover three super common questions I get about dust baths and my thoughts so that you can better understand and choose what is best for your flock. So to start off, chickens will naturally bathe in the dirt or in the dust bath that you provide in order to get rid of old feathers, excess oils, and to manage pests, as well as to cool off in the hot summer heat. So even if you don't have a chicken dust bath set up, your chickens are naturally gonna dig holes out in the chicken yard and fluff themselves in the soil no matter what. But as a chicken keeper, I like to provide a dust bath filled with ingredients that are known for killing pests if they're present. But just know that if you know that you have an infestation of mites or lice or any other kind of pest on your chickens currently, you need to treat them individually. Just having the dust bath isn't enough to get rid of all of the pests. And you also can't force chickens to use the dust bath. And so just know that if there is a pest issue, you should always individually treat each bird. But if your birds aren't currently infected with any infestation of bugs, then having that dust bath is a great way to prevent them and keep them at bay. So in a previous video of mine, I go over how to set up your dust bath and which ingredients to use, but basically you can just use any decent sized container filled with a mixture of soil, diatomaceous earth, and or wood ash. And you wanna make sure that wood ash is strictly from burnt wood that isn't treated and there's no other materials that were burnt. And so after people watch that video, that is where all of the questions come in. But before I go over each question, I want to explain why I use wood ash and diatomaceous earth. So the very first reason why is because those are both known for effectively killing pests. You can use both or just one or the other, and I would mix them in with soil, and it makes a great solution for actually killing the pests when chickens fluff in that mixture. Some people will argue and say that dirt is just as effective at smothering out pests, but I like to be on the more proactive side and add in that diatomaceous earth or wood ash so that it's a little bit more potent at getting rid of the pests. I don't wanna just depend on the soil because truly I think that having the wood ash and or diatomaceous earth in there is much more effective at getting rid of pests. So now that leads us to the very first question, which is whether or not diatomaceous earth is safe to use in a chicken's dust bath. And if you've ever searched this on the internet, you will quickly discover that this is a very heated topic in the chicken keeping world. But these are my thoughts. The very first thing to note is that if you use diatomaceous earth for any reason, it needs to be food grade. After that, I believe it is a really great natural product to use around the chicken coop and the garden. It has zero chemicals and it's safe for both animals and humans to consume. However, the harmful effect of diatomaceous earth is that it is such a fine powder that when it's inhaled, it could be irritating to the lungs. But that's true with just about any kind of fine powder or dust out there, really all things that could be inhaled can be irritating to the lungs. It's not just diatomaceous earth. But I think one of the main reasons why people are afraid of diatomaceous earth is because it contains crystalline silica, which can be even more damaging to the lungs. But diatomaceous earth has less than 2% of crystalline silica, and so it really has to be inhaled frequently and for a long-term period of time for it to really be harmful. And the truth is that's just not really the case with your chickens. They're not all going to use the dust bath every day. And even when they do, there's a very slim chance that they're really inhaling all of that powder. Right here is my mixture of soil, diatomaceous earth, and wood ash. And you can see when I mix it around, there's pretty much zero dust. In other videos, I have shown at times that I use a straight mix of just diatomaceous earth or wood ash. And I don't believe there's much harm to that either because right here I have an example of some diatomaceous earth that I wanted to sprinkle and show you what happens. So when I fluff through it or spill it on the ground, there is a tiny little initial cloud of dust, but then it quickly carries away. It isn't just stuck in an enclosed area where it would be inhaled. But for the majority of the time in our chicken dust bath, it's a mixture of loose soil and diatomaceous earth or loose soil and wood ash or a combination of all three, just depending on what we have on hand. And now for the second common question I get, which is whether or not to have your chicken dust bath covered. And the short answer is yes, if you can. A dust bath should always be outside. And so it's nice if it could be covered because then it's out of the weather and it won't get rained on and it allows your chickens to just use it all year long, rain or shine. But currently in our chicken yard, ours isn't covered, but we don't have rain for a very long season. And so it's worked out well for us, but I could easily move it under the cover this winter if I needed to. And now the third question, which is what to do if your dust bath gets rained on? And clearly since ours isn't covered, it's a question that I get quite often. And the quick answer is that if it gets rained on, you might have to scoop out the ingredients 
and replace it with fresh ingredients or just wait for things to dry out and add fresh ingredients. But here's the kicker. So if you're using wood ash from strictly burnt wood, no other materials or treated wood, it is a non-toxic material until it gets wet. Once it gets wet, it is a very alkaline mixture that can turn into a form of lye, which can cause burns to the skin. And even though that is very important to know, here's why I'm not very concerned with it being in the chicken dust bath. The first reason is because it's only a hazardous mixture when it's wet. And I've never seen chickens out in the rain dust bathing or getting in a dust bath that is a sloppy, wet mixture of soil. They want to be in light and fluffy and dry soil. And that's, I think, why they're so attracted to a chicken dust bath versus just the hard dirt, because they can clearly see that it's fluffy and it's a nice mixture to fluff in. I've never seen them get in a muddy mess. And the second reason I'm not concerned is because the alkaline content of the ash very much diminishes after that first rain. And so if it's been rained on and dried out and then rained on again, the alkaline content is so much lower. And so it's not gonna have the potential to be that hazardous lye substance that it was the first time it gets rained on. So if you happen to be out of town and it has rained and you're worried that your chickens are now gonna go get in that mixture, well, first of all, it's very likely that they're not gonna get in it while it's wet. And then it's gonna dry out. And if they happen to get in it again, then it doesn't have that same harmful effect. So I wouldn't be concerned with running out to your chicken yard and scooping out the ash if it's raining. Your chickens are pretty smart and they're not gonna go get in it while it's wet. Of course, I can't guarantee that, but I have never seen this and they just don't really like to be out in the rain. And so you're not gonna see your chickens getting in the wet ash that could potentially be hazardous for them. But the one thing that will happen after the mixture gets wet and then dries out is it's likely gonna be very hard like this. And I have a little video right here and you can see it pretty much gets hard as a rock. So you either need to break that material up or just completely scoop it out and get rid of it. And then once you get rid of the old materials, you can just top it off with fresh ingredients and you're good to go. So I hope that some of your questions regarding chicken dust baths have been answered. But if you have any other questions, please comment below and I would be happy to answer or help out. And in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I believe a dust bath is a must have feature for every coop, but that's not the only one. There are eight other great chicken coop features that I mentioned in this video right here. So head to that video next, take a look, and I will see you there.